Chapter 2, Understanding Rates of Change, and 2.1 talks about determining the average rate of change. Now, this is absolutely nothing new to you. You determined rate of change before. It was called slope, and with linear equations, it was really easy because the slope was always constant. So let's talk about a couple of things here before we get into some of the calculations. You do remember how to find slope. Right, the slope of a line, you might have said the slope was equal to rise over run. That sounds very familiar, I'm sure. And for some of you who have trouble remembering which one goes on the top, the rise, of course, means going up. And as Elmer Fudd, if you remember, Elmer Fudd was always hunting the waskily wabbit, he would say the Y's over the run. So the Y's on the top. So Sometimes you might call it delta y over delta x, where delta just means the change in, right? Or you might have just written it as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So very basic formula. It's slope. That's all, right? So again, if we had, um, let's say we had two points, and I said, um, I have the point minus 3 and 2, and point Q is going to be 5 and 18. And I want to know what is the rate of change over these two points. Now, these two points don't have to be on a line, right? They could be on a curve. They could be, maybe they are on a line, but you don't know. If I just give you two points, you don't know if they're points on a line or points on a curve. But still, if I want to find the rate of change between these two points, all I have to do is I'd say the slope of PQ I should use capitals because I had points, but we'll leave it at that, is rise over run. So I'm going to do 18 minus 2 over 5 minus, be careful, minus 3. Now, remember, it doesn't matter which point you start with as long as you start with both coordinates first. So 18 minus 2, 5 minus minus 3, that's going to give me 16 over 8 is 2. Now, when we're talking about lines of rate of change, it's, you know, this is really just the slope, right? But if you're dealing with a word problem, and I said to you, okay, um, I went to Toronto, I live in Ottawa, I went to Toronto, it was uh, 400 kilometers, and I went 100 kilometers per hour, and I want to know um, how long did it take me to get there, you would know to divide the change over four, right? So if I said 400 divided by 100 would give me four hours. Or if I said I went to Toronto, it took me four hours, what was my average speed? You'd say, well, uh, 400, you went 400 kilometers and you were going at, um, you took four hours to get there. So that would be 100 kilometers per hour, right? So the really important thing when you're dealing with any word problems, um, that you need units. If I just said, oh, I went 100. 100 what? 100 feet per second? 100 what? So you have to have units. It's very important, very important to have units. Okay, the rate of change. You need to know how it relates to the word problem. For a line, the slope is 2. That means it goes up 2. For every 1, it goes to the right, right? 2 over 1 rise over run. There's always a run here. Okay, so getting that out of the way, we talked about slopes a lot in grade 9, 10, and even grade 11, and we have different types of slopes, right? We can have positive slope, positive slope that's going uphill, negative slope goes downhill, and you can have a negative rate of change. Things can be decreasing or increasing. You can have zero slope when it's flat, and do you remember this one? This is your undefined slope. In other words, you rollerblade uphill, downhill, and on the flats, but you can't go straight up in the air, at least not yet. Someday I hope we can, because I would love to do that. Okay, so that gives slope out of the way. Now the next thing you need to know about is something called a secant line. And a secant is just a fancy word for a line that joins two points on a curve. So obviously when you have a linear function, it's very, very easy to determine the rate of change. It's just the slope. 
But if you have a curve, let's say I have something going like this, and I want to know the rate of change between this point and this point, well, that's when I draw what we call a secant line. So I'm going to draw a line between these two points. That makes it a secant. Let's make it nice. So I would draw a line like this. And if I evaluated the slope between these two points, I would be finding the slope of this line, right? So a secant line goes through two points on a curve. So we'll call this a secant line. Now, if you want to just call it a secant, a secant is just from here to here. This is the secant line, just a little bit of semantics there. If I want to know the instantaneous rate of change, which we're going to get to soon, we draw a tangent. So a tangent line, and we'll talk about this more a little bit sooner. Tangent line goes like this. So this is a tangent and it only touches at one point. And this is what you get into when you're talking about calculus, because you're trying to find the instantaneous rate of change and more on that very soon too. So you should know the difference between a secant line, which is a slope, the a line joining two points on a curve, and a tangent line, which only touches at one point only. Okay, so this is between two points, and the tangent line is for one point. Okay, so um, in this section, that's pretty much all they talk about. Um, we'll do a little example in a minute, but I want to talk to you a little bit about the things that make average rates of change interesting, maybe. So you do know, we first just said that linear relations, linear relations have a constant rate of change. Constant. Constant. And I'm going to say ROC for rate of change. And that's all it is, is the slope, right? Slope. Slope is constant for lines. But when you have um, a graph of something, and I want to know what is the rate of change. So if I have a graph, I can find, oh, there's a plane coming in. I can draw secant lines, secant lines, and over, over a certain interval, right? So if I said between, well, in this case, I went between this point and this point. So I can want ask you what is the what is the rate of change? I'm going to draw a secant line over a determined interval. So that could be between one and five hours or something over a determined interval and calculate the slope and determine the slope. That's easy, right? You know how to determine slope, rise over run. Don't get confused by this exercise, this whole chapter two. It's all about slope. So if you have a nonlinear relationship that doesn't have constant rate of change. So when we talk about nonlinear, we're talking about things like parabolas, uh, cubic functions, quartic functions, anything that's not linear, nonlinear, nonlinear relationships, they might not be functions, do not have, do not have a constant rate of change. Constant rate of change, okay? The average rate of change calculations will be different over different intervals, right? So let, let's look at that. If I drew a curve like this, let's say, let's do a parabola. So if something like this. So the rate of change between here and here, look at the slope of that line, it's pretty flat, right? But if I said, uh, what about between here and here? Well, all of a sudden, my rate of change is going to be much higher. So this is going to be a greater rate of change, and this would be less rate of change. It's kind of not very grammatically nice, but less of a rate of change, so lower. Now, finally, if you have an equation, if given an equation, if you're given an equation, the average rate of change a R O C average rate of change can be determined. Now I bet you can tell me how to do that. All you're going to do is 
by finding two points, two points on your curve. So if I have an equation, all I have to do is plug in the x value, I get a y. So I need two coordinates with x's and y's, and then I determine the slope on the curve um, by substituting substituting x and finding y to get two points. Well, we already talked about that, right? We need two points. You always need two points to find the slope because you're finding the slope between two points. Okay, so let's look at two different things here. We're going to look at a graph, which I have here, and then we're going to look at an equation. So let's say I have this curve here. The temperature of water being heated. Now, because this is obviously a word problem, there are uh, units on the axis. So this is centigrade time. So your rate of change is going to be in degrees per second, right? So you can see I have a couple of uh, different secant lines drawn here. There's one from here, from A to B, and there's one here from C to D. The curve is kind of, let me make it purple. Well, it doesn't show up very well, purple, but it's going like this, right? So you can see the rate of change between C and D is obviously going to be less than the rate of change between A and B because the slope of the line is steeper. <coughs> Okay, so it says the temperature of the water increased by 80 degrees in 80 seconds. So here we can look at, we've got a nice um, table of values here, which gives you all the units that are happening here, right? So this, somebody recorded all these temperatures. So between 0 and 80 seconds, <coughs> sorry, um, it went from 20 to 100, so it increased by 80 degrees. So it was 80 degrees in 80 seconds. So you'd probably say that's one degree per second, right? One degree centigrade per second. So make sure that you have units, like I said before. So it says, however, we can tell from the graph that the temperature increased at a greater rate near the beginning and a lower rate near the end. So as you heat up water, it's much easier to heat up the water to a certain temperature and then it gets harder to increase the temperature past well let's see as we go here and then of course you know that water gets to 100 degrees centigrade and it's not going to get any hotter that's the hottest the water can be not steam but the water okay so you can see that if i asked you um what's the rate of change between uh 20 and 30 seconds you could use the coordinates here so let's say between 20 and 30 seconds so I would do so let's say between 20 and 30 seconds I'm just going to use those coordinates so the rate of change rate of change is going to be the change in Y so subtract the Y's over the change in X 30 minus up oh, 20 I was already getting to the answer so that's 10 over 10 so that's one degree centigrade per second. So between 20 and 30, it was already down to um, what we said overall it would be. Okay, so let's look at one that's going to be steeper. So look at this one here, between zero and five seconds. So 40 minus 20 is 20 divided by five. That's four degrees per second, right? That's all this is talking about. It is not difficult. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do for you here, I'm going to do just a little equation. So using an equation, let's say I said the height at some time t was going to be given by this equation here, 200 minus t quantity squared. And I said, what's the average rate of change? So calculate average rate of change from... Um, t equals 50 to t equals 100 and there'll be seconds and this is the height in uh i don't know meters so i'm just making this up well sort of kind of i didn't make up this equation <laughs> okay so i'm going to evaluate the height at 50 
we're going to put that in here. 3, 2, 5, 200 minus 50 and square it. And I'm going to tell you what that answer is because I don't want to spend the time showing you how to use a calculator. And the height at 100 is going to be 0 0.00325. Make sure you write your work out. Don't just make it messy. 100 squared, and that's going to come out to 32.5. So once I have these two points, remember, write them out as coordinates. Then you won't make a mistake. So there's one coordinate, and the other coordinate's going to be 100 and oops, 32.5. That's why you should never use ink when you're doing math. And now all I have to do is find the average rate of change. So I'm going to say the average rate of change, rise over run. So I'm going to do... Uh, I think I'll go, well, it doesn't matter. I think I'll do this one first. So I'm going to 73.125 minus 32.5, and I'm going to divide it by 50 minus 100. Now, you can probably guess my answer is going to be negative, right? Because on the top I have positive, bottom's going to be negative. And so when I divide that all out, I get approximately minus 0 0.8125 meters per second. So that means that it's going down. The height is decreasing, right? So you don't say decreasing at a negative amount. You would just say it's decreasing at 0 0.125 meters per second, or the rate of change is negative 0 0.125 meters per second. Make sure you write it out properly. Okay, so that's all really that's happening in, in section 2.1. Very simple. It doesn't get much harder in chapter 2, so if you're writing a test on this unit, you should be able to ace this one. All the best.